for being here. Hopefully, well, as as a couple more people drop in, we'll continue saying hello. But uh, just to give you some quick thoughts, so uh, Arendal, we're a, a swarm building the future of work and so on as a venture studio. The, today we're going to have these the speech day with some of the ventures that are applying to join as part of the collab program in collaboration with Arbitrum. So this is something that that we created, thinking that the future of work is not solopreneurs nor corporations, but swarms, and actually for creating an ecosystem where we're collaborating across ventures, supporting each other, we can go uh, a lot further uh, because very much. It takes a village to incubate each idea. It's not enough to just give a few grants or a little bit of capital and hope for the best. Uh, but especially in early stage teams is collaboration, community, other people supporting you, other people helping you find the right contact, talent, uh, giving you feedback, et cetera, that can make a huge, huge difference to, to build a venture, build some good tools that are sustainable and can have a, a positive impact in the ecosystem. So the... Today, we're going to be talking mostly about these venture formation stage. Uh, so we, ha we, are, we had uh, about uh, over 100 people that applied to do a research fellowship with us in December. Then in January, we started doing that fellowship with, with six, six fellows that were selected. Next week, we're going to have a demo day where these fellows are going to share a lot of what they learn about the different problems that we're, they're working on. And and now and so we're gearing up as well now to the to select one venture for or venture formation program that comes uh, after the fellowship. So after you have dig deep into a problem, understood what it's about, uh, you then are starting to have a prototype, an MVP, etc., and get some traction. Then that the part of the program where we deployed fifty thousand ARP tokens, uh, a lot of support, a lot of hands-on support of the R and L team working together with the ventures. And then as well of that, all the support of the swarm of like the peer peer support between all the different ventures, all the different teams that are collaborating within the this collaboration tech ecosystem that we're building. And so hopefully with that, then we'll build a venture portfolio and eventually, and eventually the full venture ecosystem as uh, different ventures start to support each other and service each other. Uh, and we can take this ecosystem off the ground. So. As I was saying today, the objective is we have selected some ventures that we thought were cool that are doing interesting things in collaboration technology amongst the 70 or so applications that we got. And we're going to give them a little bit of a space to share more about their projects so our community and, and as well each other can learn about uh, what everyone here is doing. And this is part of the selection process out of which we're going we're gonna to pick one, at least for these pilots. Uh, we're working with Arbitrum to unlock more funding and we'll be able to, uh, to get more of you onboarded into the swarm. But for now, uh, there will be one, uh, one, lucky, one lucky winner in this round. Uh, so without further ado, let me pass it back on to Rosso uh, to take it from here. Yeah, I just want to thank you, Daniel. I just wanted to, to launch this poll. So the poll is launched. I hope everyone can see it, right? Did you see the, the poll? Okay, so this yeah, is seeing it. this is going to run throughout the whole event. And one after the other, when you hear a pitch, you can then go and vote right how likely would you be to invest in cambiatus for example very unlikely or very likely or i didn't understand what they are doing we we add those things and then at the end we'll get the results of the poll this is our way to include the community to what we are doing hear what you think and help us probably make a decision so we could we could start if there's no objection to that, what do you think? The yeah, first one let's, is... Let's get it going. Awesome. So let's the see. first one is going to be Tuki and Aler. Please, Aler. Yeah, right there. 
just for your convenience, we are number five in a pool. <laughs> Uh, let me share my screen. Oh yeah. Do you do everything fine? Yeah. Do you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Uh. So yeah. Okay. Hi. Um. Uh. Imagine the world. Their marketing is cheap and easy. Uh, that's the vision behind 2KIO, eco-marketing DAO. Modern marketing is uh, complex, requires huge experience and hard work. Uh, moreover, uh, since 2013, left wing marketing efficiency has dropped 110 times. That makes um, it nearly impossible to new projects gain traction. 2KIO solved the problem by leveraging the power of collaboration. Co-marketing co DAO allows the free marketer first collaborate in marketing campaigns to share costs and build collective readability. Second, tap into collective intelligence, access the network of marketing teams, and copy the best use cases and practices. We have spent the past one and a half year on building and validation to KIO on a beer market. Now, as the market recovers, we're perfectly positioned to help projects together conquer the common bull run. We already have 10,000 in recurring revenue from just 18 customers. But the market of digital marketing is growing 670 billion by. The three marketing is 27 and half billion. But to care, you laser focus it on a precip and seed startups. Their cumulative marketing spendings are five and a half billion. To KIO boosts projects in the three uh, key pillars, size, action, and trust. Collection audience from multiple sources, then converting to our various lead magnets to re-engage uh, this consistent content flow is incredibly complex task. But now startups aren't alone and can, can boost each other with single entry to success. The place where startups collaborate to invest in marketing efficiently and collectively copy or build marketing funnels. To KIO provides no code technologies to make marketing automation accessible for everyone. The network of marketing teams ready to share their experience and automation templates. We already integrated with 150 apps and plan to provide more. Unlike traditional marketing agencies or similar tools, to K offers unparalleled budget efficiency and co-marketing opportunities. So we are the only platform where we do not reinvent the wheel, but let copy fly wheel. Uh, every campaign run on 2K benefits both the participating projects and 2K itself. It creates a powerful flywheel that drives our continuous growth. The two token fuels the uh, 2KIO uh, ecosystem. Uh, holders can use token to access the network and technologies participating in governance and benefit from discounts and boosted campaign performance. We have achieved remarkable traction with zero marketing budget, thanks for our innovative co-marketing model. Team of two founders, this strong development and business backgrounds, the support of world-class marketing advisors are the key of 2K results. 2K invites you in new era of collaborative marketing in Web3. Join us now to achieve the success together. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Aler. So now we have three minutes of Q&A. Anyone who has any questions can ask. Feel free to ask now. I have a question. Um, great yeah, presentation. Please, Thank you. Uh, what is the, the profile of your ideal uh, client or user? Oh, yeah, we are boosting Orneorns to unicorns. Uh, and, but what I mean, Orneorns, it's like a ready to work founder, focus it on uh, success with a team uh, of marketers or without.
Anything else? Anyone else? I actually would have a question. Sorry, I, I don't have my video on. Um, just going to turn it on. What what are some of the risks that you considered in your project? If you if you could talk about that. Mm, I believe uh, the biggest risk if uh, players such as Zapier will integrate Web three technologies and Web three sources of, uh, source of graphics in and some collaboration uh, activities. Um, I'm seeing a, a question from Dre in the chat. What's an example of something that was solved through this process, please? Ah, so you mean the use cases or? Type of tool they can integrate it. Uh, so uh, currently we like, like integrated the uh, uh, marketing tools in the same time this uh, pure web three tools such as like connect to uh, blockchain get information write information to the blockchain i hope it is answer or like send a lead to hot uh, hotspot uh, access to google spreadsheet to get information out of it okay we have time for one more question which is already in the comments so by a question by Chris, can Tuki give an example of the type of tool they can integrate with? I think they uh, answered that pretty well. Yeah. Um, awesome. I, but you wanted a clarification on my question. Um, so a use case, but I'd love something really concrete. Like some actual, like what was the marketing outcome? Oh, size, uh, action and trust. The and thing, the, what was being marketed? Uh, a few DAOs, uh, um, LinkedIn and borrowing protocol, um, cross chain swaps protocol, uh, and like uh, clicker game, uh, this some like community around. Yeah, we shared three user stories uh, about like how we framed it like for uh, two DAOs and uh, yeah, DAOs and what else. So yeah, like I will just share a link in the chat about our, our uh, past user stories. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Alain. Okay, great. So is Alex from Outlabs ready? Thank you very much, Alain, by the way, and Vasily. Hey guys, yeah, I'm ready. Thank you, Aler. Thank you, Rosso. All right. So again, for your convenience, as Aler said, we are number two. So if you want to, you know, give us a good awesome. vote. In the meantime, I try to share my screen. All right. Can you guys see my screen? Okay. Yes. So, all right. So that's great to be here. Uh, I'm Alex from Italy and the founder of Outlabs. And today I will present you the AutoS. It's an action-based social network for specifically designed for DAO participants that lets you uh, manage your on-chain reputation, identity, and reputation in only one place. Um, the reason why we want a social network specifically for DAO members is that uh, we believe that everything is going to be a DAO in the future. They are just a more efficient way to collaborate, to build innovation, and um, to build relationships between people. And uh, 4.57 billion, pretty much anyone that has access to the internet, is already part of an online community. Whether that is, for example, Reddit, where you have some karma that you will be able to do nothing with, or uh, Stack Overflow, or anything else, uh, for example, traditional social network. Um, the reason why we didn't all uh, shift to, to DAOs uh, and mass is that DAOs come with their own uh, class of governance problems, namely anything that is related to capturing values of members. So this uh, drives DAOs to incentivize members poorly, as well as, of course, member, members being poorly incentivized. Uh, this brings DAOs back to plutocracy and recentralization. So in one sentence, the, the old uh, issue of measuring human value and being able to uh, capture contributors' value, rewarding it accordingly. 
Now, our solution for that is building a sort of uh, financial movement, reputation finance, that is centered around the contributor of a DAO. So reputation-based economy empowered by the out ID, that is a soul-bound token that ties together contributors ID with all the DAOs they're part of, and the out uh, the brand new social network that allows you to manage and monetize your own chain reputation, community life, and social interaction map. Now, um, the, the, the simple thing about the, the out s is that you can see everything that you do during your digital life in the DAO space in one place. There are three simple tabs. In one, you can see your 3D social graph. In the other one, you can manage anything that is related to uh, to the DAOs you're part of, from tasks to events, to uh, anything that uh, showcases your performance. And in the third, you can build new interactions that you can monetize and are reusable by the entire Web3 space. I will give you a quick time about that. There is some music, I hope it plays. Now, Music brief about this. That's ah, okay. Uh, <laughs> either way, the here you can see there is a search bar. Basically, here you can type any uh, self sovereign ID in existence, and uh, you can connect with them. So the idea is basically to crush the the concept of the six degrees of separation. If you share interactions on chain actions with any person in the world, you can connect and you will join their map in a degree or the other. I will give you more comments later, but. For now, <laughs> I hope you enjoy. So here, as you can see, the map is blurred. I will create a link by checking all the interactions completed by this person. I will verify that they completed one of them. And I magically appear here. So it's as simple as that. Now, what interactions are at the basic level is basically, you know, um, sort of a ENS for on-chain actions. So each one of them is an NFT, is readable on the blockchain as uh, any ENS domain, and uh, they can track user-to-contract interactions. If you call any um, function in any deployed contract, then potentially is a trackable interaction. Plus they are available for the entire ecosystem to use and once created, the creator itself can uh, monetize them and receive royalties in perpetuity. Now, all the concept of the contributor economy lies in the autonomy matrix. That is the very first framework that allows uh, a viable way to measure reputation on chain in a global way. And uh, we consider it as the intersection of the participation score of a person in a community, the community credibility itself, and the on-chain actions that uh, people make in a full intentional way. So I hope you enjoyed the DAP. Uh, I hope uh, <laughs> it looks cool. Uh, and is powered by some math, so it makes it more, I would say, verifiable than uh, just regular Web2 socials. The, the business model we use is success fee, so anyone can use our products, protocols, and dApps for free. And whenever they monetize anything related to their uh, uh, reputation, interaction builder, or uh, reputation-based financial instruments, we will receive a success fee. Our team has uh, an average of six years of experience in Web3, and we cover all the different departments. We have some community partners that we've been working with. And uh, uh, we uh, already raised- I'm sorry, Alex, please, uh, let's make all the all the pitches three minutes, my friend, because uh, we'll, we'll run out of time. So right. when, you, um, when you're I... able, please wrap up. Yeah, Thank so you. I will just wrap up here. So we've been active for three years. Uh, we started in March 2021. We built uh, the Skill Wallet ID, the very first Sorbonne token. And we went on to raise our funds, uh, our pre-seed. Since then, we, we built three protocols, tested with thousands of people during our collaboration with, uh, with Global. And now we are about to uh, to launch the, the AutoS that will as I mentioned, uh, power the um, contributor based economy. So thank you for listening to me and I hope you have some questions. Thank you very much. 
So the first question is from Yatan. How could the reputation score be hacked? What risks are there? Well, it's up to you to tell me. <laughs> uh, nice. we've, we've, we've tried to, to explore all possible scenarios that uh, came to our mind, but obviously not. The idea of building collectively is that uh, if you find a way to hack it, we can fix it together. I, I doubt you can, but I hope you can. <laughs> okay, a question from Carla. Could you elaborate a little more on the success fee? Yeah, so thank you for the question. Uh, the idea is that you can build an interaction um, based on three simple things, which are basically the, the contract deploy, deployed the functions that are called, and uh, um, financial models, so a way in which you, you want to be rewarded. Um, this can be by usage, so for example, how many DAOs integrated, or how many people use them in uh, use this interaction in their um, out a deep module to automate some on-chain tasks, or for example, it can be a flat fee. Based on uh, this, we take a small percentage. You can see it's similar to, for example, a DAX fee. Thank you. A question by Drea. What other capabilities, sorry, would you want to integrate with, the, with instead of building? Did I say it correctly? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think uh, so. No, thank you, Ross. Uh, well, in general, I believe uh, our main focus is on the has always been on the protocol side. So we built stuff that uh, only through the intersection of these protocols could be built, mainly a reputation stuff. Um, we know that there are, uh, for example, Lanster now called A, <laughs> and other uh, protocols, social networks that have been focusing on other things, like, for example, social feeds or sharing uh, messages or, the, let's say, creator economy. These are very simple modules that uh, we it doesn't make sense for us to build and are already pretty nice, so we can easily integrate. We are currently exploring a partnership, for example, with uh, Farcaster. And uh, yeah, ideally, uh, we should be able to allow um, AutoS users to use, for example, frames, which should be very nice. And again, it's something that we can compose instead of build from, from scratch. Thank you. Uh -huh. So we, we have one last question in the comments, but I'm afraid we are out of time. Uh, can... If you would like, please, please uh, type your answer there, my friend, okay? Okay, so thank you all, and they will reply to Antonis in private. Awesome. Thank no, you. Guys. Not, in, not in private, uh, in, that, in that public, but just in, in written form, yeah? All right. <laughs> awesome. thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Alex. So next one is Rome Viharo with uh, IG Wiki. Please, Rome, three minutes, my friend. Okay, hello. Uh, thank you, everyone, for having me. This is going to be a very, very quick. I know everyone is... Uh, is eager to get on with everything. So I just want to introduce everyone to AkiWiki. I um, I call it the win-win the protocol for the World Wide Web. Um, AkiWiki is a platform for essentially online consensus building. Um, it's a way to essentially gamify natural human conversation on the web. And this has a lot of uh, potential as an exportable protocol for AI, social media, conflict resolution. Um, this is a very unique kind of discussion algorithm and a, a, attorneys uh, endorse this. So this can be applied for hard negotiation, consensus, brainstorming, all kinds of things. And basically how it works in, in a AkiWiki consensus is voting is, uh, does not determine an outcome in this kind of a process. There's no admins that determine it or, uh, uh, determine the outcome or make a decision. There's no third party. This is something that's reached user to user directly. And essentially players of this game, AkiWiki and the conversation, kind of just work through conflict and disagreement by collaborating to obtain permissions to change the system and rewrite the consensus. So if someone was to find something in a consensus that they disagree with, they could just jump in and change it like you could on Wikipedia. It's like anyone can edit. Um, because it's not relying on a voting algorithm. So one just one person with a uh, with a very strong you know conversation and a set of points could could change a consensus. 
Um, and this means that if you were to gather 100 people on one topic and it's 100 people that you would least expect to ever have a consensus on anything, this uh, algorithm would be able to essentially publish um, a rational consensus from their conversations programmatically. So this is a, it's a very unique uh, computational and psychological system. And we can uh, uh, reach these consensus without voting, no thumbing up and down, no likes, no dislikes, no admins, no third party. And the consensus is just gonna be comprised of collaborative behaviors. That's the, that's the quick review. I'm trying to share something else in my screen, but I can't seem to, uh, uh oh, I can't seem to get to my other tab right now. But, we, but right now we, we are- um, we I'll share it, share it again. Oh, is that, oh, can I do that? Okay, stop sharing. Yeah. All right, and I'll share again. Desktop, okay. What is going on here? Sorry, I'm taking up all of my time. Doing this. So this, I just want to show you. So this is um, basically AkiWiki. Um, uh, it uses a like a ternary type of a logic, and it moves a conversation through nine. I call them narrative events of a conversation. And we just coded the, um, um, we're piloting the discussion algorithm right now on, on single topics. Um, and I just wanna show you guys real quick. Um, I do give one-on-one -on -one demonstration. So if anyone is curious how you can, you know, approach an argument from a win-win perspective, um, I love showing how it works, but, and we are piloting conversations in the system right now. And this is one conversation. So basically uh, two people have a conversation around a topic and they just have a conversation however they would like. It, you know, it's natural conversation and they essentially tag their own responses and uh, the responses of the person they're talking to with zero, one or two in a tag after they have a conversation. And just from that simple process, the, um, the algorithm will um, find the threshold in the conversation where they're given an opportunity to obtain a permission to edit. And um, this can actually work against people trying to game the system. So if people who are introducing deception or they're, they're problematic, they're introducing toxicity, they will not be able to reach a threshold to change the system at all. So um, it's a very, very unique system. I've been working on it actually for, for, for 21 years. You really have to go through it and see it to understand it, it to see it for yourself. But that's the quick demonstration of, of AkiWiki. And uh, it has so many potential unique exports, um, governance, law, even um, social media, AI. And uh, that's it. That was that was my quick pitch and presentation of AkiWiki. Thank you, Ronald. Thank you. So we have a question which I just lost because other questions came up on top of that. So how transparent is this, Ramon asks? Is it auditable? Is it, what was that word, audible? Auditable. Can it be audited? Audit I guess. Auditable. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that's what it, it, it's, it's full transparency to the consensus process. So um, uh, whatever the, the conversation is, you, and people can read how any conclusion was arrived at. That, everything it's full transparency um everything mm -hmm. As, I, I i quick pick quick pitch no more no more no more there is very, a... take my time I'm, I'm i'm in india so uh i'm not as crisp as I, as I would like to be but if anyone is curious to uh, um russo you 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 went through a demonstration uh last year yeah it's well, really my, something yeah. yeah and i encourage people to try to game the system on the demonstration um this project we were accepted into the national science foundation um it's a really unique application of game theory and human psychology um and computation so uh okay. if anyone is curious they're welcome to have a demonstration with me okay there's another question what deliberation systems out there is it most like there is, I, I don't mean to sound obnoxious, but there is absolutely nothing like this. And there really, there really, there really truly isn't. It's, it's not a voting system. It, there is nothing quite like it at all. I would love to know if there was actually, but there, I, I haven't seen anything. 
And, la and the last question, which is a follow-up question, are there systems that it's different from, you would say? Well, it's Andres. definitely different. It's it's definitely different from any system that introduces voting, mm -hmm. right? So there, so um, so any kind of system that had ha that requires a vote, this is radically different. It's it's an entirely new way of looking at conversation. So mm -hmm. um, it, a, a voting system is you know it's essentially like binary dualistic. You vote something up or or down. This is um, applying you know essentially a, a ternary based system. Uh, zero, one, or two, basically. And so we can account for every possible thing that can happen in a conversation, including conflict. So no matter what happens in a conversation, the system can keep up with it and account for it. Okay. Carla has a question. And yeah, let's, could... that's, that's the last question because we need to move to Carla. Sure. Sure, sure. Uh, Ram, fantastic. Is it somehow related with uh, neutrosophy? Are you familiar with that? The idea of having... Yes, no, and an in-between option. Well, it is. I mean, it, I'm, I'm asking I because hear... I'm working on something similar, so we'll love to chat. I love to chat with you. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know if it, if you, uh, Phil, I'll put my uh, email in the window. But um, I didn't hear what what you said. Um, but it is it, it is a like what you say. Yes, no, and and maybe. I mean, that's a, a simple way of looking at it. But it does look at human responses on a spectrum beyond just like a dualistic response. Yeah. Okay, so Rome, uh, we have we have a few questions from Alex in the comments. Please feel free to type the answer to those because we need to move to Carla from Cambiatus. Okay, thank you very much, okay. Rome. Yeah, yeah, and Russo, good to see you. Good to see you again. I'm, I'm so good glad. To, uh, good to see yeah, you, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, been yeah. a while. Okay, and listen, guys, I'm probably going to drop off early, too, because it's so late at night, my time, but I'm going to answer these questions. But thank you so much. Thank you too, Rome. Thank you for coming, Rome. Good night. So, Carla. Carla from Cambiatus. Cambiatus, let me know. Oops, sorry. Just give me a second. Can see it well. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Okay. Yep. We can see the whole browser. Um, thank you so much. Uh, imagine, imagine communities thriving on their own terms, empowered by their own social currencies, collaborative businesses, decision-making tools. That's the future we are all building here. Cambiatus is building also towards that, and I'm thrilled to be here today to share it with you all. I'm Carla Cordova uh, from Costa Rica, co-founder of Cambiatus, alongside Renulfo Paiva Barbosa, here in the picture, my lovely husband and partner in crime, he's from Brazil. We are entrepreneurs and community builders with deep expertise in decision-making, impact, and Web3. And we built Cambiatus back in 2018 because many communities lack financial resilience and an incentive mechanism to achieve their goals together. And Cambiatus empowers them. Uh, our tested platform with over 10,000 users to date and eight active communities in Costa Rica, Brazil, and Ethiopia provides the tools they need. And what are those tools? Well, a way to create social currencies or social tokens with no coding, a secure P2P marketplace to exchange real products and services and pay each other with this social token, and a way to manage objectives and governance collaboratively with this social verification or social voting. Uh, this is up and running and working for communities promoting environmental conservation, cultural activities, local economies. Uh, and you can see on the image, that's the a screenshot of, of how the apps actually look like. But we notice that most of the communities using it have a non-for-profit spirit or are supported by philanthropic organizations, which is great for impact, but it's not financially sustainable. Not for them, not for Cambiatus. So now we want to, sorry, now we want to take Cambiatus to the next level by migrating its tech to an L2 like Arbitrum, and in the process, adding features for what we call collaborative businesses, which is our own way to call a DAO. But given that we are working with people that are not Web3 users, we are using this term, and which is a community-owned business 
with shared governance and member benefiting treasuries, kind of the evolution of a co-op. The first one of these businesses that we are launching is that we launched already is called Coffee Blocks, which is focused on delicious coffee from Costa Rica. We already run a couple of pilots using Cambiato Spec to launch a reputational token that members can earn and they use it to buy coffee. And in, it, I mean, if they buy coffee, if they attend events and they engage in regenerative practices, they earn this token. After six months of the pilot, with more than 5,000 in revenue generated, we redistributed back to the coffee producers and the clients around 1,000 of this in income. Uh, Cambiatus got a piece of the income from Coffee Blocks too. So our aim is to multiply that effect in the next two years and to nurture many more collaborative business with Cambiatus tools. And we believe that's super aligned with, with the objectives of, of our endow. That's why we are here. So I'll be super happy to answer your questions and thank you for the opportunity to be here. Thank you very much, Carla. That was beautiful. Any questions to Carla? And Cambiatus? So I have a question. I couldn't type that fast. Um, this is a very interesting project. And because you have implementation, I wanted to ask a question related to implementation. What were some of the challenges you encountered? What Many would you challenges. Say? Many challenges. Onboarding, onboarding normal people to Web3 is always a challenge. So we had to invest a lot on UX and usability and interface to make it easier for them and to kind of a kind of avoid all the complex things that we are used to as Web3 users, like managing your keys and interacting with a contract. So everything on the platform is uh, is designed to be easy to use if you only know how to use WhatsApp. So that was the first big challenge. And the second challenge is that the, the use the clients, our clients are the communities, and most of these communities are backed by a nonprofit or a community fund or a local organization. Uh, and we need to convince them and teach them how to use this and help them to craft their own social currency or their own business. So it takes a lot of time to actually onboard a new client. And it was funny because I, I read that this on the R&DAO uh, website that it says, you take a lot of time to onboard something new, someone new, and then you don't know, and you don't have anything else to offer. So that's, that's the problem for us too. Uh, another challenge. And, um, and yeah, I think those are but we managed so far. <laughs> Thank you for the question. Okay, we have a question by Chris B. What are you, what are the key selling points of Cambiatus to potential user projects? Mm, great question. So uh, first of all, the people that are using Cambiatus, they are not looking for Web3 tools. They are looking for a way to organize and motivate their community to do something together. They want, maybe they want to achieve an environmental goal. They want to move people to uh, buy more things locally. They want to encourage people to, I don't know, have access to more cultural activities or participate in local activities or to learn. So that's, those are their objectives. And they want to, they, they need something to encourage people to join. And the incentive mechanism is the social currency. So that's kind of the motivation. They are, they usually have a community already I don't know, 100, 200, 300 people that already are doing something and they are struggling to track contributions, to track actions that these people are doing and to give rewards. So all those things they can do with Cambiatus. And apart from that, after giving the rewards to people, people can take that reward, the token that they have in their account and use it to buy or exchange with other people products and services. So it actually incentivizes a local economy an economy inside this community. So those are the, the key things that they achieve with, with our tools. And mm -hmm. our our end goal is to make them use Web3 so they don't notice. And then afterwards, they start learning about Web3 and we get to onboard them. So that's our deep, dark secret. <laughs> <laughs> that's nice. That's nice, Carla. Thank you very much. So any further questions, please ask in the comments and Carla will, will get you there. Next one is Max from Stargazer. Yeah, hi everyone. So uh, share my screen. So um, do, do, do you see? Yeah, yes. Right. 
Yes. No. Yes, sir. Uh, so uh, I'm founder uh, of Stargazer. Uh, we are building cross-chain identity abstraction management protocol. What a uh, problem what we are addressing? We address a problem of fragmented identity data across chains and applications. Uh, I bet that you face it managing a bunch of wallets across your Web3 journey. Uh, you are not alone in this. 86% uh, of our indexed uh, users, they have spread their identity data across various chains. So uh, we connect uh, wallets, names, account abstractions, the centralized credentials, uh, into identity abstraction to simplify management it from user side and understanding it from application side. We won't uh, launch another passport name service or something like that. We provide automation tool for applications. For example, Arbitrum application integrates Stargazer and could easily understand a uh, user from Solana ecosystem, his profile, onboard him with Web3 name and embed wallet, and engage him uh, integrating with CRM and uh, with Web3 messaging automation. We already have our, our proof of concept ready. Uh, it's index data infrastructure about uh, all, web, all, all the most popular Web3 uh, domain owners, uh, domain service owners, uh, and testing it with our early B2B customers uh, to build uh, identity management tools on the top of this data infrastructure. We also have uh, over 40 uh, early partners who are interested in integration of their identity tools with our protocol. And we are part of a uh, startup program of significant infrastructure providers like Alchemy, QuickNode, and, and uh, Covalent. So our business model is quite simple and uh, it's basic usage-based fee uh, for our service. You use, you pay, yeah? <laughs> and we uh, integrate our uh, utility token to leverage this demand and to provide this like a loyalty system where you could also uh, earn ecosystem rewards to your audience activity. Uh, we have clear understanding how uh, like our obtainable market, which we will onboard because we already indexed uh, data about our, uh, our our index identities, and we know exactly what uh, applications they use. And uh, we we just onboard this application. We already have Web three domain owners audience, uh, which we know a lot of about. Yeah, uh, and uh, we are raising to uh, kickstart our public launch across fifty initial applications. Uh, and uh, we have uh, necessary expertise to deliver this product. Uh, I am a B2B deal maker. We have our CTO is experienced uh, integrator and our CEO is, uh, he has experience uh, in uh, SaaS business growth uh, to 1 million ARR uh, from zero. So uh, thank you for your attention and uh, uh, I would be glad to answer on your questions. Thank you very much, Max. Great presentation. Any any questions? Looks like everyone is still in the poll voting. Uh, someone asked me, by the way, if I can share the poll again. But if I share the poll again, we lose the the old data. But if you all if you all remember what you voted for, <laughs> we can share it again, I guess. Yatan, what do you think? They're not. Uh, people should be able to click on the polls and then it pops up back up. Yeah. Hmm. There is a question from Paul. Can you discuss some competitors and differentiation? Yeah, sure. Uh, our main competitors right now is Polygon ID and IDOS. They connect uh, separated 
um, identities and credentials, but they are focusing on uh, inter identity interoperability. Uh, while we are focusing on uh, automated workflow for up applications. So we are partnering with them. Also, we, we have uh, negotiations with Polygon ID. So we um, complement them not to compete. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, and there is another question from Crispy. Can users use this system, unite their wallets without declaring their ID? Sorry, uh, could you please click specify? I'll try, and explain. Uh, I'll try and explain. So if, if I have a bunch of wallets that I want to take advantage of the system and secure under a Stargazer United ID, but I don't want to declare any of those. How how readable are those individual wallets or ENS names or or can I have a, a an encrypted single user ID? Can I preserve privacy under uh, while still gain uh, taking advantage of the unification capabilities? Yeah. Yeah, right now we uh, aggregate uh, all this data without asking you. Yeah, <laughs> we just aggregate all of on-chain data connected with your uh, names, wallets, and and like uh, credentials. Uh, but of course, we uh, we are GDPR compliant, and uh, you could just uh, manage this visibility. And uh, also, you could connect new wallets and new payment methods. Uh, and we, you, you shouldn't even know about it. We just request your wallet signature without uh, another application, another like uh, like uh, Google Chrome uh, plugin. Yeah, <laughs> we, we we just uh, navigate this request directly in your wallet because we know that it's your wallet, and you have to prove uh, your uh permission with this signature yeah <laughs> okay so there is another question by ramona but i think we need to move uh to the next one so max if you can please uh reply to that question in the comments sure, sure. thank you thank you thank you very much so the next one is florian from common ground yes hi everybody let me share my screen. Um, there. Okay, can you see? Perfect. All right. Um, hi, I'm Florian from Common Ground. Um, the problem we want to address is that communities seem to be stuck in a local maximum called Discord, meaning they are stuck in a Web2 environment, although what they want to do is Web3. And we think that the approach to Web3 apps, something like DAO tooling so far was not able to convince people to switch out of these Web2 traps. That's why we're building Common Ground. It's a fully featured communications application comparable to something like Discord or Slack. It runs on mobile and desktop. Um, it's integrated with over 15 blockchains and um, it wants to cater all the needs that people currently fulfill through something like Discord. It's really a Web3 super app for blockchain ecosystems. It helps them to kickstart the ecosystem social life, bring all the communities together uh, on chain under their brand and helps them accelerate the adoption of their blockchain and identity stack. We wanna give on-chain organizations the tools to scale their collaborative surface by composing Web3 primitives into a delightful user experience. And the three pillars we see in terms of Web3 primitives are on-chain reputation, on-chain governance, and on-chain finance. Our go-to-market strategy is really focused on ecosystems as partners. We've already onboarded three ecosystems and have more in the pipeline. These ecosystems then bring their communities and these communities bring their users. And we've seen great success with that approach. Um, we launched this ecosystem uh, features in November and since then, we've really seen massive growth. We're now at over 40,000 users and over 4,000 communities. The way we want to monetize this is sort of three-pronged. We're starting with these ecosystem partnerships where these ecosystems pay to be prominently featured on Common Ground and have their dedicated space. What we're launching next week is premium features and subscriptions for communities and users. 
And down the road, we believe we can add a third tier, which is focused on social fi, co-fi, and other sorts of things where people do transactions on common ground where we can take a commission. Our angel investors are absolute cornerstones of the industry, people who literally built Ethereum since 2014 and even earlier. Um, we're currently part of the Consensus Fellowship. Uh, we've done outlier ventures, so really very reputable people uh, who are supporting us. Um, and that's it. So I kept it really short. <laughs> that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Florian. Uh, any questions? Yes, Alex. Yeah, I mean, very straightforward question. So for a web two user, let's say, what would be the the real difference in the user experience from uh, Slack, for example, or uh, Discord? So for a Web2 user, that doesn't have to be any difference. That's because we allow you to sign up with an email and a password if that's your thing. So we don't force you to sign up with a wallet, but you can. So we really want to make it compatible both for Web2 and for Web3 users. And we hope that over time, Web2 users will discover the benefits of actually adding a wallet in order to have more uh, Web3 capabilities. Okay, a question from Ramona. Is there a generally available version to try? Yes, uh, just go to app.cg. Um, that's the very short domain. Um, let me post it in the chat. And you can just try it. It's completely public. Thank you. A question by Drea. What triggers a jump to Web2 market? When do you become, sorry, someone, when you, do you become better than what's there today? Um, we believe that it's really gonna um, be absolutely unique and sort of a must have product, hopefully at some point when we add more and more Web3 integrations. Um, we have set, set our eyes on uh, you know, integrating on-chain media in all kinds of interesting ways but also governance. So we know that governance participation in something like a DAO is very low. And we believe part of that reason is because voting is happening on something like Snapshot, but the community actually lives in something like Discord. So there's this disconnect and we want to sort of overcome that disconnect by putting it all into one comprehensive tool. So the people discuss and vote in the same place. Thank you. A question by Alex, what do you mean by onboarding an ecosystem? What does it mean practically? That's a very good question. Uh, so we've onboarded three ecosystems so far. Two of them are layer one or layer two blockchains. And what we have to do to really onboard them is to integrate their blockchain and integrate their identity stack. And so um, the way we've done it with these three ecosystems that we have so far is that we got a grant from them and that grant allowed us to um, basically build these integrations. And then we go from this grantee relationship to a SaaS subscription relationship where they pay us to maintain that integration. So um, it's uh, quite involved depending on the ecosystem. If it's an EVM ecosystem, it's pretty fast. If it's a non-EVM ecosystem, it's pretty cumbersome. So we really focus on EVM ecosystems at the moment. Okay, so one final question by Antonis, who says, thank you for the presentation. What specific KPIs do you employ to assess your product's user engagement and retention beyond mere user count to gauge its stickiness? Yeah, so we definitely have a retention problem. Uh, we see that in our numbers um, and it's really hard, I think, to overcome. It's a lot of work. Um, we want to employ incentives better. We want to employ referral systems and all these kinds of things. We don't have that yet. Um, the first sort of big chunk of work that we're addressing now is uh, better notification systems um, because we see that not so many users have notifications activated, so they don't know that something important has been happening. So we're really improving our notification game next to, to improve retention. Thank you. Thank you, Florian. Um, 
So we have to move to Paul from Cambrian Protocol. Hey, everybody. <clears throat> Hi. Thanks. That was, uh, these have been great presentations. Uh, really enjoying the show here. So let me get into a slideshow here for you guys. Hopefully you can see this. Okay. Um, starting my timer. At, uh, at a high level, you can think of us as building freelance tools like Upwork uh, with blockchain technology, but um, more specifically, because of the whole blockchain eating software slash economy thing, we're working to help labor and services transactions move on chain. So our goal is to participate in the creation of a product for labor and services transactions that is decentralized, permissionless, and ultimately an open source regenerative public good. So at the core of Cambrian Protocol is the belief that a protocol for labor and services means actually moving beyond the general bounty contracts seen in the market today. So if you, if you think about getting work and paying people to do work today, there's lots of really great solutions like Gitcoin and Brain Trust and DWork and Talent Layer, and, but everybody's using a general bounty contract. Uh, and what we're looking at is, is allowing any buyer and any seller to create a smart contract that that more optimally manages the work being done. So instead of every job um, using this general bounty contract, for example, you might have one job that benefits from say a ZK circuit added to credential a worker, or another job might benefit from uh, deploying a spoof minimized camera integration to prove that something was delivered. Um, at, so when you go to cameraprotocol.com, you're gonna find a no code composer and a DAP interface. And that allows smart contracts to be customized for the job. So the freelancer themselves can build their own private smart contract that they send to people. Or if you're hiring a freelancer, you can send them a smart contract. Essentially it comes as a link, you click the link and the link opens up sort of this chat interface between you and the, and the, the buyer and the seller. Um, so the emergence of artificial intelligence really radically changed how we were looking at things. Um, surely, you know, we think the future work includes using programmable money. Um, but, you know, in this world, I, I think it's important to think about crypto transactions becoming this gate where human governance can be expressed and where revenue and value added services can be metered and managed. So even if AI is generating 99% of value, you know, to be wild about it, Crypto offers a 99% of the value management from integrating components like DIDs, reputation history, credentialing, decentralized arbitration, fiat on and offboarding, bridging, escrow insurance, all these types of things that make smart contracts better for, for jobs. Um, most recently, what we've done is we've figured out how to allow an LLM to leverage our platform to configure smart contracts themselves. So you're essentially able to just kind of talk to a, an, a, chat, a chat tool and spin up a solver, which is what we call these smart contracts uh, that are specifically for labor and services. And this, this, you know, obviously is a UX improvement, but also leads towards task-oriented AI agents and wild features like that. We're a classic two-person team, uh, and um, you know, we're uh, we're thrilled to be uh, presenting today. Cheers. Thank you, Paul. Right on time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My so, timer, my timer went off there. So, any questions? Please, there are many comments in my in my chat. So, if someone sees a question, or feel free to raise your hand. Okay, a question by Chris. Can you describe the usership of the tool so far? Right. Uh, so the very first um, proof of concept user that we went with, we went to Bankless DAO and we had them um, create a smart contract so they could hire people to write content marketing for them. Um, so, you know, allowing they could just simply put a post in their Discord, somebody could click it and um, and write a content marketing article, essentially. Um, and one of the things that was interesting about that smart contract is there was an IPFS window where you could embed the deliverable. So it becomes a, you know, sort of a better mousetrap, I guess. Uh, 
Thank you. Any other questions? Can I ask um, through the mic? Yes, so, of course. I mean, talking about work deliverables, um, there is always like a human factor which might be hard to translate into a smart contract where like probably the, the, um, the company who is hiring would have like a different opinions on tweaks and, and things. So how do you envision in integrating this human factor into the smart contracts? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the the pipe dream would be that, let's say you were a company and you were hiring a lot of freelancers, you would be able to use KB protocol to build your own custom smart contracts that might have integrations into your own workflows. And um, on the other side of the coin, if you're a freelancer out there, you might have a smart contract yourself that you can send people that allows you to get paid in milestone payments or does some things that you like better than Right. And, and if you think about this from the point of view of like just hoping and praying that someone's going to pay you. Right. Most freelancers out there, they're inter interacting by email. They're having a great experience with everybody and they've been getting paid. And all of a sudden they delivered a bunch of work recently and they didn't get paid for the last little bit. Right. And um, so there's, you know, there's um, there's some lo lots of different stuff to talk about there. But hopefully I've addressed a few things. Okay, a question by Ramona. Could you talk about pivoting of your project over the years? And another question by Chris, how many users today? Yeah, so we, um, when we did this infamous Bankless DAO uh, proof of concept back in the summer of 2023, we were really at the end of our funding rope. And um, this was at the moment that FTX exploded and, you know, all that stuff was happening in the space and AI was coming in. And in all honesty, we really got thrown uh, a curve by, uh, by, you know, what AI was going to do to the future of work. So um, there's nobody using the product today. We, we basically put it on ice um, and um, we looked at what we could do with AI with the project because it really changed the way we were approaching smart contracts. Uh, we came out of that this fall, uh, Nick and I, and we've been working closely with MakerDAO right now with the goal of embedding ourselves in there. Um, and and so they would be, I guess, the first user. We're, we're just kind of in meetings right now to, to try to make that, that come to, have, to pass. But, you know, ultimately we didn't pivot, right? Um, but AI just is such a game-changing thing that you just have to kind of absorb it. Like, we, we were thinking, oh, we need this big community of people creating smart contracts, right, that, that were custom for different types of jobs. And now we can just talk to an AI and it's going to spin up a smart contract. So it really kind of changes that. And, and then who's going to, who, why, you know, do, you, do you care who does your work if, if it gets done? And, and AI agents being able to do a whole bunch of pieces of work changes things as well. Not that it does anyway yet, yeah, right? We'll see. Thank you, Paul. Thank, Thank you. you. So next is Joost. Joost? What you, uh, I, I hope. Phon phonetically, it's uh, it's toast with a Y. Joost. <laughs> it's a Joost. Nice writer. Yes. Nice. Beautiful name. Oh, so Joost from Nestor. Yes. Yes. I'll share my screen. Yes. Uh, there we go. Do I have the right one? Yes. Wonderful. Yeah, nice to be here. If I look a little bit sleepy, it is because I am. I literally woke up 15 minutes ago. It's my, my very early in my morning. I'm in New Zealand. Um, but let me pitch to you what we are doing. So uh, Nestor is collaboration for decentralized teams. And uh, de de decentralized teams here being uh, DAO and non-DAO alike. Let me uh, pitch a little bit. In this pitch, I want to really take a high-level approach and then uh, slowly get to some details, but within three minutes, there's not that many details, right? But I really want to anchor our work in our purpose because that's what we're really all about. So our purpose is every organization supports our collective needs. That's what we deeply care about. That's why we get up every morning. 
Uh, and what that means is one who support every organization or collective that come together to do anything for that to be an expression of their collective needs and the people that are impacted by it, their collective needs. All right, so what does that mean? Uh, that means that our incentives need some realignment uh, compared to what is happening today. And that's kind of where I want to look at. And I'm suspecting I'm preaching to the choir to some extent here. So wonderful. Uh, conventional organization and tools generally uh, focus on uh, supporting work and communication. Right. So think your Monday.com, your, your Asana, your Slack, uh, they serve that, which is wonderful. And they, they help with effective execution. But what they generally lack is our shared agreements, our, our, our governance which means that you get to deal with corrupted incentives or uh, at best unclear incentives that are uh, driving the effective execution. Now, if you look at um, oh, it's other timers at the top, if you look at decentralized organizations and tools, they focus on agreements. So we've got aligned incentives, but they often um, come with lagging execution, like the work and the communication fall behind. And what you see is that uh, in, in, in DAOs or uh, self-organization tools, they take uh, the work and the um, uh, and communication and try to stuff it in the tools of, of the agreements. And that, that, that falls flat uh, in my experience. So what are we doing with Nestor? We offer uh, collaboration tools where the work and the communication are anchored in our shared agreements so that we get purpose aligned, um, incentives driving effective execution. That's the overarching goal. And how do we do that then? So where are we at? We have a collaboration tool that offers these three functionalities. And we have a live product. We've got uh, 3,000 paying users uh, with about 100K, close to 100K of annual recurring revenue. And we received 100K of pre-seed investment. Um, we have AI integrations because with my uh, the, the comments of my previous presenter, I totally agree AI is going to completely change the way this works. Uh, we already have a, 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 a live product that helps uh, iterate over your agreements and your collaboration using our AI bot. I'm happy to touch upon some of the questions, uh, the, the specifics of the product in the, in the questions. Um, but why Colab? Um, we want to make sure that we can support more on-chain agreements than we do today. And I think this is a wonderful opportunity to do so. Uh, and I welcome your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joost. Uh, Joost, sorry. <laughs> Any questions to Joost? Yeah, I have. Uh, I have a question. So, the having worked with Holacracy, and I know the the framework is somewhat inspired. Holacracy is very powerful, but also requires a lot of training and onboarding. How many? of the of the users you have are coming from like organizations that have already implemented holacracy or do you also have adoption from outside that world uh, a bit of both and it's definitely uh holacracy heavy because that's that's my background and that's where i come from so that makes a lot of sense for my network uh, but the way uh, we set up nestor is to be uh, supporting any and all experiments in self in self-organization or decentralization so it's it's very flexible. You can you can turn on and off a whole bunch of apps that uh, that serve you in doing decentralized work. Um, but I I would say that about 50, 60 percent of our client base today is uh, holacracy specific, uh, and then some inspired, and then uh, the rest. We have some DAOs that are are playing in uh, using Nestor as well because we actually do have a DAO integration. Um, so it's it's. I believe that is really um, um, the, the field that we're aiming for, uh, and that's going to keep growing because Holacracy is just one flavor. It's a trailblazer, wonderful, but it's not the platform or the way that it's going to um, uh, keep going, I, is my uh, expectation. Okay, that answers your question. Okay, Joost, another question by Yatan. Um, do you help organizations find their common purpose or start when they are already clear on that? Well, if, if the you is me, then the answer is yes for the tool. Um, not directly, but a little bit. So what we, we actually have uh, an AI supported org builder. So what you can do, you can set up an account in, in Nestor and then you can just give your website and we, we defer a purpose and, uh, uh, and, 
your governance from that. So it gives you a starting structure with role circles and, and accountabilities, um, including organizational purpose. So yes, we help with that. Uh, in all honesty, that's still somewhat gimmicky because if you, I, I really believe that AI shouldn't help us set our purpose. That is a deeply personal experience. Um, so the AI should be there uh, to work within the boundaries that we give it. And that's, that's, that's also very, very strongly our AI strategy. So that AI is there to help us manifest our purpose rather than drive us in a direction that is somewhat opaque. Thank you. Okay, another question. What does it mean to have a DAO integration? What's so different what we, on Web3? So yeah, so what we what we um we don't believe everything has to be on chain, right? So that's that's really a starting point. On like both self-organization, DAOs, they're all tools for us to to manifest purpose. So where we see a, 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 an important integration uh, and how we currently integrate is that we can load uh, and import the proposals that the DAO has. And we currently support um, Haifa DAO and um, the old version of Aragon and um, uh, lost the name, come back to me. My brain is not quite awake, but there's another DAO we support. Uh, so we load those, those proposals and then within Nestor, you can annotate and enrich those proposals to actually collaborate around them. Uh, right, so it's uh, it's up to you. You can make a proposal to be uh, like either a project board, or you can make it to be a role, um, so that collaboration gets done, um, all anchored in our shared agreements. And and it's still early days, right? So again, for us, uh, what we deeply care about is purpose. Um, and uh, distributed authority so that purpose doesn't get hijacked by individual needs of owners and shareholders, right? So, and, and, and in that entire picture, we believe uh, decentralization and, um, uh, and DAOs have a role to play, but not everything has to be on chain. Like we're really pragmatic and practical because we care about purpose manifestation, not the tools to get there. A question by Artem. What do you think of Murmur? Wonderful, wonderful tool. Um, also a tool on ice, I believe. Um, and that's that answers part of the question. Um, I I think Murmur will struggle to actually um, find adoption because it, it focuses on just the agreements and the decisions, but it doesn't anchor it into your operation. And that's where I feel, see decentralization uh, fall flat time and time again is that agreements don't come alive. It's a game you play while you're getting a decision and then you go to the work floor and informal hierarchies and, and extroverts get to make the decisions rather than that your agreements actually help you uh, get clarity on where authority lies and what decisions need to be made. Okay, the final question by Alex. What is the difference with Hola Spirit or other similar tools? Yeah, so like like Holo Spirit and uh, and Glassfrog, I think those are the bigger players in that in that space. Um, they focus primarily on uh, the structure, right? So roles and circles, that's what they do. And then they have something around uh, projects, but there's more to communicate what work is being done than to actually support you getting the work done. What Nestor is really uh, aiming to do is to be the Monday.com of new ways of working. Right, so that that's where you support the actual work because if you don't support the actual work, it is not anchored in our in our shared agreements, and thus decentralization or distributed authority is all just a game we play that holds no teeth. So that's really how we're different. That's also a challenge, right? Because it means you need to have a tool that's way uh, more has way more depth and uh, capabilities. Uh, but that's our aim. And we're not aiming at it to do everything in Nestor. Uh, we, we are building more and more integrations because we believe that organizations need to be able to use whatever is serving them. Um, but for many organizations, that means they just want one tool that, that offers them most of what they need, uh, is, is my experience. Great. Okay, thank you. So the poll is closed. I want Yatan to tell us the, to announce the results of the poll. Uh, oh, okay. What? We had Kevin from Boardroom as well. 
Hmm. I saw him. But Yeah, I didn't hey guys, know what that's would that. be. Do you still want me to, to, to talk a little bit about boardroom? Yeah, man, of course. I'm going to keep it super short and sweet here. Um, sorry about the camera. I can't get it to work, but I hope everyone can see my screen real quick. I'm just going to give a quick pitch about Boredom because we're actually a very, very simple platform. Um, Boredom has been around for four or five years now in the DAO ecosystem. And in every sense of the word, all we do is pretty much aggregate governance data. So as different types of governance participants have emerged within DAOs, not only around their interactions, different stakeholder personas, contributions within a DAO. Um, what we noticed is that more and more, there's been an interesting categorization of these types of stakeholders within different communities and DAOs. And we saw a need to essentially create a platform that could aggregate all these interactions into one single endpoint or one single platform. So as governance and this data is consumed in very different ways, as you can imagine, a wallet provider consumes governance information and identity data about a stakeholder within a DAO in a very different way than a, a governance dashboard or an identity protocol does. We noticed that all this data was being sourced from different places. Um, so the boredom platform in itself, is, as you can see, um, as all these governance participants uh, interact within across different uh, frameworks and different governance systems, um, we noticed that the boredom platform what we could do is essentially build a global and unified um, uh, platform and set of developer tools that could just aggregate all this information to one place. So we have a set of APIs and SDKs. Uh, that any developer can actually use to pull governance information, stakeholder data, and identity data uh, across any DAO, across 15 different networks, across pretty much any um, any blockchain in every system uh, from one place. They could pull all this information from one place. So what I really wanted to chat with you guys a little bit about uh, today was essentially um, the next step of what this platform will become, which is an identity layer for uh, DAO membership and DAO members. Um, what we noticed is that because we had all this information data around every stakeholder across the entire ecosystem, what we could start doing was creating a identifiable way of actually categorizing these, these members of the DAO, number, primarily because when we spoke to DAOs um, over the last few years, what we noticed is that they didn't even know who was a, a part of their DAO, who was a member of their DAO, what type of stakeholder they were trying to interact with. Um, so as uh, using the foundation of all the data that we've already aggregated, the next step is essentially for us to build what we're calling the passport or identity card for all DAO memberships um, across the space. We're using, we're building on top of the Ethereum attestation service, as well as all these different other sources of data that we already integrate within the portal protocol to create a badging system that's DAO, um, DAO specific that categorizes members within a DAO based on certain thresholds that they achieve of on-chain interactions and attestations, as well as a global um, soulbound NFT that actually represents membership um, in this in this ecosystem. Um, it's almost like a global car representing um, on-chain and DAO membership activity. So I'll leave it at that. Um, super short and sweet. But yes, please reach out if you guys have any questions. Um, and we've been operating in the space for a while. So I uh, would love to kind of like also provide a little bit of the feedback that we've already received from some of our um, some of our partner communities. Thank you, Kevin. So any questions to Kevin? Okay, a question from Ramona. Are you rolling out some additional features like risk management, for example? Uh, risk management, could you elaborate a little bit on that? What uh, what kind of um, data risk, uh, around risk management are you referring to? So because you are aggregating, hi. Um, so because you are aggregating mm -hmm. lots and lots of data um, across lots of network, um, it would be very interesting. And like your product is called boardroom, right? So from a boardroom perspective, it's actually interesting to have a sort of a risk management view of projects and, and patterns of interactions. And I'm curious mm -hmm. if you have enough data to be able to build such products for these DAOs. Uh, that's going to be interesting. We're actually partnered currently with um, Gauntlet uh, as a source of risk management information. 
for some of the larger DAOs in the space. So they primarily work with DeFi protocols where obviously risk management becomes way more important. Uh, but to your point, something we'd love to explore is yes, more generalized categorizations, right? Of risk management that maybe aren't so tied into product, but maybe even just operational, right? Or, or governance uh, risk management um, calculations. Absolutely. We, we've seen some folks do really interesting stuff with the, uh, with the data that we're sourcing. At the moment, we are currently not doing those calculations, but definitely a direction we could we could go in the future, yes. I would be very keen to organize a follow-up call if you are interested to further push this um with with our indeed uh, with our endow or or um you know as part of the conversation. Absolutely yes we'd love to chat. Another question by Chris was would love to hear more about the partner communities, real life use cases, et cetera. Absolutely, yeah. So now we have uh, two main avenues for partnerships. The first one is um, direct work with the DAOs themselves. Um, so this is primarily um, different L1 and L2 networks or DeFi protocols that have already established DAOs that have been running for years. So some of them include um, Optimism, Aave, Uniswap, um, ZeroX, Synthetics, et cetera. Um, the way we primarily work with them is actually uh, providing data and information for their different interfaces where folks interact with governance systems. Um, so a lot of these uh, projects have built landing pages, different mechanisms for folks to be able to interact with their governance system. We provide the data source um, for the developers to be able to build on top of that and integrate governance into any place. Um, the second, the second uh, sort of partnership or integration um, is with uh, different, um, what we call user interfaces that present governance data in different ways than a DAO does. So this could include wallet providers, this could include aggregators, this could include, um, you know, SaaS businesses or infrastructure providers, infrastructure as a service providers that need proposal information, that need governance data, they need vote history for a specific wallet. Um, and we feed in, into them directly with a very simple API um, and a, a set of SDKs. Okay, so I guess we have time for one more question, which is why is it civil resistant? And how? Why is it civil resistant? I guess, I guess that's really dependent on the, the type of data that we're talking about, right? Because right now we're aggregating data um, for every protocol across, I mean, probably, you know, 100 or 150 different fields. So um, it, it, it really depends what what type of data you're talking about that needs to be civil resistant here are you, or maybe are you talking about the the identity i mean why and how is the question i guess right for the yeah, identity part the identity part i get, I get it yes, for yes. boardroom and the governance behavior yeah that's that's up to the the token structure but for the identity part yeah yeah, absolutely. So um, right now it's primarily the most of the protocols are actually based on the attestation, the Ethereum attestation service. So a lot of that we're relying on like preset schemas, right, that we're building specifically for individual DAOs, uh, which essentially means that, I mean, you're creating a web of trust, right, that's built on top of the on-chain activities and on-chain interactions. Um, so uh, I think the the entire point of actually integrating the EAS is to make it civil resistant, right? Where you you actually have to establish a web of trust from different participants, different sources, um, to claim that you are have done something or are a part of something. Awesome. Yes, now. So, yeah, I'm afraid we are out of time. It's one hour and 30 minutes. So that's all, folks. Um, so next week, yeah. Daniel, would you like to say something? No, uh, carry, carry on. Just thank you all very much for coming. This has been amazing. Uh, it's super exciting to see all the all the cool work that's happening in collaboration tech. I think us as a, as a vertical, we don't often get together. There's a lot of get togethers around DeFi, around gaming and so on, but somehow us, the collaboration folks need seem to be a little bit more dispersed. So it's been a real pleasure see, seeing this concentration of energy and all the amazing stuff being built. Uh, Russell, over yeah. to you. Yeah, we should definitely do a speed networking event with all those people here. Right. We're I, collaboration I feel like tech. We can make it, it mandatory. Now. We can make it mandatory for everybody to show exactly. collaboration. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> yes, Paul. Yeah. This is you. And, and also, like, here for next week. So uh, at the same time next week as we started today, we'll have our first uh, Collab Fellowship Demo Day. This is not your usual demo day. This is actually a research that has been done on collaboration tech uh, topics for three months that we accompanied. And we're going to have, uh, yeah, everybody presenting what they found uh, and uh, in a different format. So it's going to be it's going to be very cool. It's going to be the first of its kind. And we're looking forward to see you there. Yeah, exactly.